When an electron changes from one wave state to another, it emits or absorbs electromagnetic radiation or light. During these processes, the electron either gains or loses a nodal plane. If the electron wave loses a loop, it loses energy. But where does that energy go? Into a dark, scary void. Just kidding, it doesn't go to a void. It emits light in resonance with the change in the electron wave. Similarly, in order for an electron to gain a loop, it must gain energy from light. So it's all about the principal quantum number n, the number of loops. We know that there are limited possibilities for the number of loops. You can have one loop, two loop, three loops, but you can't have 2.5 loops or 7.11 loops. You can only have a whole number of loops. What that means is that there is also a limit to the number of changes that the electron wave can undergo, and that means that there are only very few quantized emission frequencies we will see when an atom emits light. This spectrum is called an emission spectrum, and every atom has its own unique emission spectrum. This one shown here is hydrogen's emission spectrum. What do you think each line on this spectrum represents? The colored lines represent an electron losing energy and emitting light, hence the name of the spectrum. The energy of the emitted light is equal to the change in energy between the final and initial wave transformation. We can calculate this change in energy, or energy emitted, using what we learned in the last video. This blue line represents the n equals 5 to n equals 2 electron wave transformation. Calculate the energy of this emitted light. Recall that all energy changes are delta E equals E final minus E initial, and we know that the energy of a hydrogen atom electron wave is given by this formula. We start off with our electron with an n equals 5 wave. This is our initial state. When our electron undergoes its transformation when it emits energy in the form of light, our new state is n equals 2. This is our n final. That means that the electron's change in energy for the process of n equals 5 to n equals 2 is this. By plugging in our numbers, we end up with an answer of 0.458 attajoules, but we can go one step further. Calculate the wavelength of this light. Now that we have calculated the energy of this light, we can use this to solve for the wavelength. Recall that the relationship between energy transferred by light and wavelength is given by this equation. By plugging in the energy in joules, Planck's constant, and the speed of light, our wavelength comes out to be 4.34 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, or 434 nanometers. This green line here has the same final electron state as the blue line. What must be true about the initial state of the green line? The wavelength of green light is 550 nanometers, and the wavelength of blue light is 450 nanometers. Looking at the wavelengths of the two lights, green and blue, we can see that green light has a wavelength that is longer than the blue light. Using the knowledge we know about the relationship between wavelength and frequency, this also tells us that the green light is lower in frequency and so also lower in energy. So wavelength and energy are inversely related, and frequency and energy are directly related. That means that the initial state must have been one of these two states. The answer is that the green light is the light emitted when the electron wave undergoes a transformation from n equals 4 to n equals 2. Each of these electron wave transformations are represented by a line on the emission spectrum, but there are some transformations that are not being represented. So why don't we see the n equals 5 to n equals 1 transformation represented on the emission spectrum? Let's answer this question by doing some calculations. Calculate the wavelength of the emitted light for the n equals 5 to n equals 1 transformation. We start off with our electron with an n equals 5 wave initially. When our electron undergoes its transformation when it emits energy in the form of light, our new state is n equals 1. This is our n final. That means that the change in energy of the process of n equals 5 to n equals 1 is this. By plugging in our numbers, we end up with an answer of negative 2.09 attajoules. Notice the negative sign. It just tells us that energy is being emitted. On the other hand, when the answer is positive, it means that energy is being absorbed. To solve for wavelength, we only need the magnitude of this energy. By plugging in the energy in joules, Planck's constant, and the speed of light, our wavelength comes out to be 95.0 nanometers. So why is this not represented on the spectrum? This wavelength of light is not visible, so we don't see it, but it does happen. In the hydrogen atom spectrum, all of the emissions that end with an n equals 2 electron are part of the Balmer series. 
These emissions are in the visible region of the spectrum. The Lyman series emissions all end with n equals 1, and they are all higher energy emissions. What does that mean about the type of light being emitted in Lyman series emissions? That's right, they are in the UV region of the spectrum. Finally, the Passion series emissions all end with an electron as n equals 3. What do you predict about these emissions? All of the Passion emissions are infrared light.